Thank you for joining the Trolley Mitigation Webinar. My name is Peter Deep, the Antibody Product Manager at One Lambda. I will be hosting our webcast today featuring Dr. Undina Schultz, joining us from the German Red Cross. She will be presenting on the evaluation of the microbeads assay, Black Screen Multi, for granulocyte antibody detection to improve the prevention of trolley. During the presentation, please feel free to ask questions by clicking the question mark button in the upper right portion of your screen and then entering your question in the chat window on the lower right portion of your screen. Dr. Schultz will answer questions at the end of the presentation. It is now my pleasure to turn today's program over to Dr. Undina Schultz. In this lecture, we will talk about the evaluation of the new microbeads assay, lab screen multi, for granulocyte antibody detection to improve the prevention of trial. Human neutrophil antigens are primarily localized on granulocytes. Currently, five HNA systems on human neutrophils have been described. HNA1 is located on the FC gamma receptor 3D and consists of four epitopes, HNA1A, 1B, 1C, and HNA1B, encoded by at least three alleles. HNA2 of CD177 is an isoantigen and about 3% of Caucasian do not express HNA2 and therefore are at risk of isoantibody formation. Recently, the VLLIC HNA3 system was located on the choline transporter like protein, CTL2. In contrast to the other molecules, bearing neutrophil antigen CTL2 is a transporter glycoprotein with a very complex structure. The VLLIC system, HNA4 and HNA5, are located on CD11B and CD11A, respectively. HNA4 and HNA5 are both in the greens on granulocytes and lymphocytes, but HNA4A and 5A antibodies are rare. Up to now, and the HNA 5B was not seen everywhere in the world. In this picture, you can also see the frequency of an HNA molecule in the Caucasian population and of the former name of the specific antigen. What are the indications for the detection of HNA antibodies? The detection of antibodies directed against HNA molecules can help to diagnose various diseases. HNA antibodies were found in samples from patients with neonatal immune neutropenia, and this neutropenia is caused by maternal antibodies, which are directed against the fetal paternal antigens on the granule size of the child. HNA antibodies are found in patients with refractorinia to granulocyte transfusion. On a patient with autoimmune neutropenia after some cell transplantation. All in patients with febrile transfusion selection. However, the present greatest importance of HNA antibody detection is the prevention of trali. The monogenic trali is caused by antibodies against granulocytes. These are mostly HLA or HNA antibodies. These antibodies are regularly found in donors and are transfused by plasma or other plasma containing products to the patient. These antibodies react with antigens on the granulocyte membrane and activate or agglutinate these cells of the patient. This leads to the formation of large granulocyte aggregates and these aggregates remain stuck in the first capillary system of our body, which is the lung capillary system. Through the release of oxygen radicals and enzymes, 
which resides in the pulmonary edema. Before initiating, preventive measures. Trali was the leading frequent cause of serious transfusion reactions. Up to 16.3% allowed by hemolytic transfusion reactions, 14.3%, and bacterial contamination, 14%. Findings of hemovigilance registry lead to the implementation of preventive measures to reduce the incidence of trali in many countries. In the UK and Australia, this resulted in an exclusion of all female donors from FFP donation because of the possibility for immunization by pregnancy. But can we ensure the plasma supply when we exclude all women with previous pregnancy? Antibody testing of all parents Female donors in U.S. was performed, but limited only to HLA antibody testing. In our study in 2012, we tested 4,690 female donors with pregnancies and found that 62.5% of all HLA antibodies occurred without HLA antibodies. And that means that 20 donors out of 4,690 had only HLA antibodies. That's 0.3% out of all donors. The German Paul Ehrlich Institute published a guideline in 2009. Plasma products for therapeutic use may only be produced by women without previous pregnancies and transfusions. All women with previous immunization and amnesis have to be tested for HLA class 1, HLA class 2, and HNA 1A, 1B, 2, and 3A antibodies. The question was, are we able to ensure the plasma supply when we exclude all women with previous pregnancies? Taking into consideration that antibodies are only detected in approximately 25% of women with pregnancy anamnesis, this means that 75% of women would be excluded from donating plasma without reason. The guideline requires that donors with previous immunization are eligible for therapeutic plasma donation if negative for HNA class 1, class 2 and HNA 1A, 1B, 2 and 3A antibody tested. There are a lot of methods for the detection of HLA and HNA antibodies. For HLA antibodies, the complement-dependent cytotoxicity test, the ELISA, or the lymphocyte immune fluorescence test are used. The MAIGA, the granulocyte agglutination test, or the granulocyte immune fluorescence test, are the standard method for HNA antibody detection. Recently, the microBCC lab screen was introduced. Using lab screen, it was possible to detect HLA class 1 and HLA class 2 antibodies by a high sample throughput, but it was not possible to detect all HNA antibodies especially HNA-3A antibodies, the most dangerous HNA antibody. If we have to test a large number of samples each day for HNA antibodies, the question is, which of these methods is an appropriate screening method? The gold standard in granulocyte antibody screening is the granulocyte immune progression test and the granulocyte agglutination test. 
However, these tests are very time consuming, especially the granulocyte site immune suppression test. Furthermore, these tests require a lot of experience in performing the test and well trained technicians. A lot of time for organization of the actual cell panels is quiet. We have only a limited number of available freshly granule sites for one test run. It is not sufficient for a large sample number. Freshly isolated vital granule sites are necessary. And this means that we only have a limited time for testing. Taking together, this means that these tests are not suitable for high throughput testing. Recently, the microbiotic lab screen was introduced. Starting with HLA class 1 and HLA class 2 antibodies, the range of application was extended to HNA antibodies later on. The microbiotic is suitable for a high throughput testing and automatization. The first generation of the lab screen multi comprised the detection of HLA class 1 and HLA class 2, as well as HNA 1 and 2 antibodies. By elucidation of the molecular structure of HNA 3A and 3B, it was possible to extend the solid phase assays for future high throughput donor screening tests using recombinant antigens. One lambda developed a new test with additional beads for the detection of HNA 3A, 3B, 4A, 5A and 5B antibodies. The key benefits of the new NAP screen multi are it is the only FDA cleared EUD test for detection of HNA3 antibodies. Simultaneously, detection of HLA class 1, class 2, and HNA antibodies is possible. Lab screen multi has a simple immunity protocol and a high throughput testing because of the Luminex platform is possible. Furthermore, the test has a fast and simple data analysis and reporting. Results were generated with the normalized background value ratio, where S number N is the sum of I call median fluorescent intensity of the special bead in the sample. SNC bead is negative control bead MFI by the sample. BG number N is the MFI by the special bead by the negative control feeder. And BG and C is the negative control bead MFI by the negative control feeder. Thus, we have a determination of the ratio value for each antigen coated bead after correction of unspecific bindings on the negative control bead. And all data are normalized with the help of the negative control serum. The automatic data analysis is done by using Fusion Software version 3.4. The next slides show our evaluation results of the new lab community Lot 5. Previously identified by GIFT and GET, 97 sera containing well-defined HNA antibodies were used. And for the evaluation of false positive reactions of the new lab screen multi Lot 5, 91 negative samples from plasma donors out of our routine workflow were used. And all 91 samples were previously tested negative for HNA antibodies by the standard methods GIFT and GET, and by the old lab screen multi-lot 4 without HNA-3A. 
The test procedure was carried out according to the manufactory instructions. The cutoff was set for the bead HNA1A, HNA1B, HNA1C, HNA3A and 3B, and HNA4A to a ratio greater than 5. And the bead for HNA2 was evaluated with a cut-off greater than 20. Figure 1 shows the results for 14 HNA1A antibodies containing samples and 2 samples containing anti-CD16 isoantibodies. 13 out of 14 HNA1A antisera were clearly positive and the cut-off was set at 5. You can see the blue bars for ratios by the bead 1A. But one of the HNA1A sample, serum number 14, did not show any reactions with the nine HNA-specific beads, including the bead 1A. This serum contains an HM antibody directed against HNA1A which is not detectable by the luminic assay because the secondary antibody used is a specific antibody for the isotope IgG. Retesting by the same lot using an anti-EGM antibody, a secondary antibody, showed correctly high ratio values with ratios of 15 for HNA1A B. The highest background values occurred by the HNA2 bead. You can see the light blue bar and HNA1C bead, the yellow bar. Sera number 15 and number 16 contained isoantibodies against the CD16 glycoprotein, reacting with all three HNA1 beads as suspected. Before we will talk about the reactions of HNA1B and 1C or HNA1D antibody containing samples, it is important to point out of following special features of the HNA1 system. The HNA1 system is more complex than the other HNA systems. The allele is FTGR3B01 O2 and O3 and code for three proteins bearing four antigenic epitopes. There is no one-to-one -one relation between allele and antigen. The relation between FTGR3B alleles and HNA1 epitopes is illustrated on this table. FTGR 3B, O2 and O3 encode proteins bearing two epitopes in each case, while the HNA1B epitope is encoded by both alleles, FCGR3B, O2 and O3. The epitope HNA1D is antithetical to HNA1C. This figure shows that 15 out of 16 HNA1B antisera reacted with the HNA1B bead, the black bar, with ratios greater than 10. The sample number 32 with HNA1B specific alloantibodies did not react with HNA1B bead or HNA1C bead. Here we found one false negative reaction. The reason for this is unclear. For all HNA1B antibody containing samples, we determined very high ratio values by the so-called HNA1C bead. You can see the yellow bar, which on average corresponded to the threefold ratio of the HNA1B bead, the black bar. Allowing for that, Reactions of HNA1B and Tisera with both HNA1B bead and HNA1C bead is correct. 
As expected, the 3HNA1D, specific anti-sera, sera number 34, 35 and 36, showed no reactions with HNA1C bead. Only the HNA1B bead reacted with a ratio lower than the others. And the HNA1C and the serum number 33 reacted only with HNA1C bead. All reactions with HNA1 beads should be evaluated according to Table 2 on this slide. As shown in this figure, 16 known HNA2 antibody containing sera were clearly positive except of sample number 44, which ratio values clearly exceeding 100 by the HNA2 bead. You see the light blue bar. The serum number 44 reacted rather weak, also in the classical phase, gift and get. Therefore, the ratio value of 39 is consistent with a true positive but weak reactive HNA2 antiserum. Of particular note, for the HNA2 specific samples, no significant background reaction occurred by the other beads. Our results and analysis with the two different cutoffs for the HNA2 bead show that a higher cutoff of 20 can be set. And the HNA4A specific antiserum, serum number 52, shows clear positive reaction in the corresponding bead for HNA4A, having a ratio value of 73, lilac bar, but also positive reaction with HNA2 bead, with a ratio of 35. But using GIFT, GET and MAIGA, there was also no evidence for anti-HNA2 antibodies in the sample. This figure shows the results of 39 HNA3A antibody containing samples. Out of 39 specific HNA3A sera, 35 were reliably detected. However, for HNA3A antisera, that means 10%, showing distinctive GET reactions, were not detected with the System. Red circle sample. That are sample number 88, 89, 90 and 91. And one of them had caused severe trolley. As a special feature to be noted is that for all positive reactive anti-HNA3A zero, the HNA3B bead, the green bar, reacted with a third of the ratio value of the HNA3A bead, red bar, which might be due to the small difference in the structure of the first extracellular domain and the single amino acid exchange. Four samples also showed high values for the HNA2 bead. You see the light blue bar. Although there was not any evidence for HNA2 antibodies in the classical test. That are the serum number 70, 79, 87 and 90. But our results show that 90% out of all HNA3A antibody containing samples were reliably detected as clearly positive by a cutoff of 5. We had also tested the 6 HNA3B antibody containing sera, but only 2 out of 6 HNA3B antisera were detected with ratios of 10 and 80 for the beat HNA3B respectively. You can see the green bar. In contrast to the HNA3A antisera, these two HNA3B antisera did not cross-react with the HNA3A bead. Here we could not see on specific reactions 
the HNA is created. However, for HNA CB antibodies were missed by the test. This table shows the results of our expanded validation to calculate the background reactions by testing negative samples from plasma donors. For background testing, we used 91 samples from plasma donors previously identified by GET and GIFT. And only 5, that means 5.5% out of 91 samples tested showed background reactions with different HNA beads exceeding the cutoff values 5 or 20. Every false positive ratio value were much lower than the average of the true positive ratio values for HNA specific reactions of the corresponding beads. But we recommended to retest all these questionable samples with low ratio values above the cutoff by standard methods, gift and get to be sure that these are false positive reactions. Because of only 5.5% false positive results, it may be possible to retest these results by the time consuming test gift or get. In the last figure, we will show you some results of evaluation of the new lot, yacht number 6, including special new coded beads. For the evaluation of the lot 6 of Lab Screen Multi, 34 sera containing well-defined HNA antibodies and previously tested by the lot 5 were analyzed. A big improvement was seen in finding of HNA1B and HNA1D antibodies. You can see this in this figure. HNA1B sera and HNA1D sera showed higher ratio values by the beat named HNA1B, the gray bar, compared to the lot 5, the black bar. The beat named HNA1C no longer responded with the threefold higher ratio, but in most cases with the half of the ratio value from the HNA1B beat. And a clear identification of the zero with HNA1C antibodies is possible. Background reactions of the new lot 6 could be reduced from 5.5% to 4.4%. The new lot 6 of Lab Screen Multi reacts highly specific with higher ratio values for the specificity HNA1A, 1B, and HNA2. However, the same HNA3A and 3B antibody containing sera, which antibodies were not found by using LOT5, also not detected by using LOT6. We are still not able to detect all HNA3A antibodies. We can detect only 90% out of all HNA3A antibodies. We can draw following conclusions. Compared to the previous tests, the new lab screen multi reacts highly specific for the specificities HNA1A, 1B, 2 and 3A required to prevent trolley. 98% of the HNA1A, HNA1B and HNA2 antibodies could be detected as positive. The detection of HNA3A antibody specificity could be integrated in the new lab screen multi. And 90% of the HNA3A antibodies were recognized correctly positive. Additionally, we detected further HNA antibodies such as HNA's 1C, HNA1D, and some HNA3B and 4A antibodies. The background reactions 
they are found by 5.5% or 4.4% out of previously negative tested samples. Nevertheless, in some cases, we recommended retesting with classical methods, especially for samples with high background results by more than one beat and by low ratios over the cutoff. Taken together, the new generation of lab screen multi is a big step towards feasible high throughput testing for HNA antibodies. Thank you for your attention. At the end, I want to thank for the great and excellent cooperation by Dr. Ryle and Professor Moog. Thank you. And that concludes the presentation. Uh, we apologize about some of the early technical difficulties. Uh, we had some issues with the capacity of the audience. Um, but the session will be archived along with a transcript and made available to you directly from onelambda.com. Uh, before we begin our question and answer session, we would like to ask you, where are you in your trolley mitigation efforts? And we'll just give you another minute or so to respond, and then we'll share these results, and then we'll head on over to the Q&A session. Okay, I think we will close the poll, and we got some pretty interesting responses. Uh, let's see here. Let's... So it looks like um, about 52% of you are in the stage of understanding the requirements for trolley mitigation, while uh, another 25% of you are um, trying to improve your uh, trolley mitigation strategy, and the rest of you are in the process of developing and implementing. Um, we have uh, a few questions that we've been asked um, a few times here, and uh, we will um, now direct them to um, Mundina, uh, Dr. Schultz, who is on the line. And uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so uh, a question that is asked is, do they use an automatic system because of uh, the large uh, sample numbers? Yes, uh, we use the Taken Liquid Handler Freedom company Taken for pipetting the sample and 96 well plates for test and for retesting. That means for reserve samples to store. The Taken also creates the sample list which is sent to the Luminex and the sample list corresponds with the product number of the donor from our company. When programming is necessary, it is important to note that the first three positions are for free control serum. We use a negative control serum, a positive control serum for HLA plus uh, one antibodies, and a positive control serum uh, for HNA antibodies. And uh, according to the created sample list, the Luminex batch is pipetted from the technicians. And after confirming of the results by fusion software, um, the results are sent from Luminex to the information system of our blood bank. And the results are allocated to the product number, to the results for HLA class 1, HLA class 2, and HNA antibodies. And then we have positive results. The donor is excluded for the donation of FFP and platelets apparatus. It's okay for you. Oh. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, another, ses another question that's been asked is um, how um, can you tell us a little bit more about how you develop your cutoffs? Yes, um, for HLA class 1, uh, we set the negative cutoff to 1.5. The positive cutoff is set to 4. That means we have a gray zone. And all samples with a ratio in this gray area we retested by a PIA uh, 1 and PIA 2. The results were sent to our information system and automatically um, the final validation occurs for HLA class 1 and HLA class 2 antibodies by the product number. And automatically, 
uh, sorry, automatically, <laughs> these products are excluded or released. And for HM, 1A, 1B, 1C, 3A, 3B, 4A, 5A, and 5B, we set the cutoff greater than 5, and for HNA2, greater than 20. And for HNA2, we need to, to carry out further studies. It may be uh, that the ratio can be set even higher than 20, uh, because there are many background reactions by the beta HNA2, uh, especially by using a specific sera. It's okay for you? Okay, Indiana, th uh, thank you for uh, answering that question. Um, another question that we've uh, received is, um, what is your uh, current screening strategy? We test our female donors with uh, previously pregnancies by the new lab Scrimoti to detect HLA class 1, HLA class 2, and HNA1A. 1B2 and HNA3A antibodies. And according the guideline uh, from Paul Ehrlich Institute, we have to find 100% of the HNA3A antibodies. That's why we additionally test all donors by using the standard method GET. And GET results are additionally entered manually in our information system to the product number, and only after this, the final evaluation occurs for HNA3A antibodies. Um, questionable reactions, that means samples with a low uh, ratio over the cutoff, and as at this time, also all positive results for HNA antibodies be retested by the standard method GUT and GIFT for additionally evaluation. Okay, great. Um, okay, and we have time for just a couple of more questions here. Um, um, have you uh, seen any trolley reactions since performing antibody testing in the recent years? Um, in the last four years, that means since um, 2012, we have no any trial reactions in our company. Some uh, suspected cases were su submitted, um, in total, uh, total seven cases, but they were not confirmed as trial reactions. However, in 2010 and 2011, were well, submitted in total nine trial cases. From the six were excluded as an immunogenic trial, but in two cases uh, there were HLA class 1 antibodies found in the donor, and in one case uh, HNA3A antibody was detected. And um, I can say our screening and exclusion method shows uh, that we successfully can minimize trial reactions. Okay, and we have a question about your previous study in uh, 2012 where uh, I believe they're asking, have you uh, tested only women with pre previous immunization in your study in 2012? In our study, we have tested uh, 4,690 female donors with previous pregnancies, about 3,000 female donors without pregnancies, and also about 5,500 male donors, also without immunization anamnesis. And HLA, HLA antibodies we have found in women without pregnancies, 6.3%, and also in men without previous transfusions for 3.6%. It remains open whether these antibodies are among the most widely discussed natural antibodies and what's their clinical impact on trialing. HNA1A, 1B, 2, and 3A antibodies were found in less than 1% in all three groups of donors. 
And our results show that male and female donors display the same percentage, less than 1% of HNA antibodies, which said that HNA antibodies are not formed only through previous pregnancy. Uh, the cause of finding of very strong HNA antibodies in male donors, uh, such as HNA2 and HNA1B, uh, which are our control sera in our test, we have uh, to think about another possible way for immunization without pregnancies, transfusions or transplantations. On the other side, our observed positive reactions for weak HLA and HNA antibodies may be result uh, may be a, res a result of possible bacterial infections due to the similarity of the HLA and HNA epitope to the epitope structure of bacterial pathogens. This was also reported by Bonesco and Terazaki et al. and needs um, further investigations. We have a lot of work. Okay. Um, okay, and um, let's see if you can answer this question, Undina. Uh, it's coming from Europe. Um, it's a question about the negative cutoff. Um, if, uh, if it's set according to the manufacturer, um, what about the undetermined sera? We have uh, set a cutoff of 5 or 20 for HNA2 antibodies because we have not found false negative reaction for the specific sera. All antibodies were found when we set the cut off to 5 or 20. I hope uh, you uh, can see this in the figures. It may be uh, some reactions are false positive, but uh, that's not so important uh, when we exclude uh, at first uh, one donor more and uh, we retested uh, later with gift and get and um, our zero. So um, we've been asked if the slides will be made available and uh, once again they will be available uh, along with a transcript of the entire presentation uh, directly from our uh, onelambda.com website. Um, if you have any remaining questions, uh, please email me at uh, peter.steep at thermofisher.com. Um, thank you for joining us today. I believe this will close our session. Uh, we hope that you found this webcast presentation informative. Um, and a short survey and information regarding CE credits will be emailed to you following this webinar. This concludes our webcast. You can now disconnect. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much.